Hey, they're really here. You're likely here because you're interested in either seeing how this was done or in making your own pave style gem encrusted doll. Before I get into it, I have to say this tutorial assumes that you are using SS3 size rhinestones, which are 1.4 millimeters in diameter. If you use larger rhinestones, you'll have to modify your own calculations accordingly. I'm going to insert some of my last video in here to explain a bit about this style before I actually get into the whole process. What you're looking at is a doll set from head to toe in high quality rhinestones arranged in a pave style. This little lady here is comprised of over 16,000 hand set rhinestones and took me over a hundred hours of work. I first fell in love long ago with pave style jewelry. I'm showing some examples here a few silver rings that I have, and then a selection of cheaper pieces that I collected over the years. As you've probably guessed from these, the idea is to create as much full coverage as possible, creating a jewel paved effect, the word pave being French for the verb to pave. You can also find statuettes and figurines similarly paved with crystals, like this crystal myriad peacock designed by Martin Zendron, which I've been drooling over for years on end. Now, I suppose I should lay out what tools and materials you want on hand before getting busy. And this is what I work with. First off, a doll, of course. Any doll of your choosing. Though this definitely works better on at least Monster High or Ever After High sized dolls. Like the thickness of their limbs, their shoulders and limbs and stuff are too thin to be able to accommodate shaving off the kind of area that they would need in those sockets. And especially their heads wouldn't do very well. They would get a very pixelated uh, type of effect with the features that they have. Material 2, um, warbler or some other sculpting material if you want to make additive modifications. I prefer thermoplastics like warbler because it's fairly durable and lightweight. You'll also need paint or mica powder and paint brushes. There's going to be little spots here and there where doll skin will show through between crystals. Painting the skin the same color as the overlaying crystals helps to make this less noticeable. You're going to want to err on the darker side of that color if you can't get the exact match. Because, um, you know, like if you have a lighter color underneath those crystals, they're going to be a lot more noticeable. Next off, rhinestones, which is actually the hardest thing to pin down. Real lead crystal is the best, but it is prohibitively expensive. Swarovski no longer sells to just the little guy. You actually have to sign up to be approved by them to get resellers to sell to you because they only want to work with specific brands and stuff these days. But um, you can get Preciosa, which is similar to Swarovski, slightly lower quality and slightly cheaper, but still pretty expensive. The next best thing is glass. And there really, unfortunately, is not a particular seller or brand that I have been able to find that are both high quality and reliably stocked. It's all about the cut and clarity for these, which can vary greatly. Price is often at least something of an indicator, but also check customer reviews and photos. I bought and compared quite a few samples when I was working on a project back around Christmas, but even now, just half a year later, some of the sellers I bought from are gone and others have popped up. If the pictures look like cheap plastic, that's probably what they are, or not much better. Below glass are resin rhinestones, which I do not recommend because they will eventually yellow. Then at the bottom of the barrel are acrylic and plastic. Resin, acrylic, and plastic all scratch easily, showing wear and tear very quickly, cheapening the overall look of your project. In addition, acetone melts them, so you can't use that to easily clean stronger glues off of them. Next, you will also need an X-Acto blade and replacement blade since they will dull quickly, a Dremel tool with various sized and shaped burrs, this is going to cut out so much time from your project. You'll need sandpapers or files for those small areas, though you will not need to grade down to fine because the whole surface will be covered. You'll need some type of glue, 
I use GemTac, which holds much better than E6000 for me. And last few things, toothpicks, Q-tips, and acetone. Or if you're really set on using things that are melted by acetone, uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, I guess, you can use for cleaning, but you won't be able to get the glue off likely with that. And with that out of the way, let us begin. Step one, establish the overall shape slash sculpt of your doll. For instance, if you're going to do a hard sculpted hairstyle like I did with Gulia and uh, will be doing with Ginger, that is the first thing you need to deal with, dehairing the doll and sculpting the new hairstyle. Or if you want to modify the body shape or add some features, etc., etc., it's a good idea to sand seams down and sand any molded underwear off as such obstructions prevent the crystals from laying flat and will result in a wonky looking section with crystals pointed every which way rather than an evenly paved surface like it's supposed to be. If you're going to use a single larger gem for each eye like I'm going to do for Ginger, you should flatten out the spot on the eye or the large gem will be protruding out strangely as it's like perched on top of a dome and you may even see the raised edges of it from different angles depending on what you use to surround it. Now step two to the joint prepping. And draw lines out on the doll's joints where they will need to be carved out for mobility. If you want to still be able to pose your doll once it's all blinged out you have to make room for all those little gems. With each limb, move them around to their furthest extremities and mark where the limbs meet the socket. Surface of all the space between those lines and the body need to have about two millimeters of space carved out. Since you're removing so much material here, you'll want the Dremel for this stage. Most Dremel bits, uh, even the ones that have a coated flat tip, will still not dig down very far very fast if you try to press it perpendicularly. To make this step easier, take one of your Dremel bits and mark a spot on it that's about 2.5 millimeters up. Then tilt your Dremel 90 degrees and press down until the line that you drew on your bit meets the surface. The 90 degree angle cuts that uh, 2.5 millimeters in half, so you'll have a 1.25 millimeter deep divot. Make these all over the spaces that you need to carve out. Then carve out between them however you like. Once that's all done and smoothed out, you can carve out some extra space inside the joints with an X-Acto blade to free up just a bit more room for movement, which will finish allowing full movement. Now just taper off the edges, and double check all the joints, moving them around, and making sure that it looks like there's enough room everywhere. Lightly sanding the rest of the doll is optional, but depending on what kind of paint or glue you use, that could make a difference as to how well the gems stick. You'll also want to make a light mark around the neck to note as far as the head goes when you tilt it in various positions because you won't be able to apply rhinestones there if you want to keep the head's mobility. And now step three, the shortest and easiest one, wash your doll and dry it thoroughly. Pretty self-explanatory. I just use uh, dishwashing liquid. Step four, undercoating. Paint various areas the same color as the rhinestones that will cover them. If your doll isn't already molded in the colors that you want to use, paint them with either acrylic or mica powder mixed with Mod Podge or something similar. As I mentioned, there's just going to be spots here and there where the doll skin is going to be visible between the crystals, so you don't want them to really stick out. And now step five, start gluing. This is where the majority of your time is going to be spent. Start with any areas where you're going to have finer details like the eyes and eyebrows. You can't let those get offset or the features will get uneven and wonky. So it's best to set those areas early on and give them the chance to dry before you start working around them. As I'm working, I use a toothpick to spread a little glue over a small area. Make sure that the glue isn't too thick or the stones will sink into it and uh, the glue will like dry over top of them and it's a big pain in the butt because it completely dulls the shine. Then lightly wipe the excess glue from the toothpick on a paper towel or a paper plate or some surface you have nearby. 
it'll still be slightly sticky and that will make it easy for you to use it to pick up rhinestones and lay them down where you want them. Then you take the other end of your toothpick or a different toothpick altogether and uh, use that to slide it around in the exact position you want it in. Even if you do end up getting glue over top of the rhinestones, which is actually pretty likely, it's almost unavoidable from time to time, unless you're just always just perfect and precise. But as long as you're using crystal or glass, you don't really have to worry about it too much. Because, step six, clean up. Now it's time to polish up. I use acetone on Q-tips to slowly and carefully go over the whole doll, starting from the head down to the arms, then down the torso to the toes. I wear silicone gloves for this part, just to avoid getting fingerprints and body oils back on it again as I go. Acetone cuts through the glue fairly easily, so in those spots where it got over the gems, or you used a little too much glue, this helps you to get that sorted. However, if you used resin, acrylic, or other kinds of plastic, acetone melts those, and it'll completely get rid of any shine that it had because it melts the surface and makes it streaky and textured. The best you can do that I can think of is just rubbing alcohol, which will at least remove fingerprints and body oils, but won't do anything to the glue. And with that, you are finally done. It's a lot of work, but for someone like me, it is totally worth it. If I were rich, I'd totally have a few of those Swarovski crystal myriad sculptures, too. Maybe someday I'll try my own hand at making something similar. I'd love to see other people's Pave projects. So if you give this a try, and if you have a minute, please come back here and share some pictures. I hope some other people take an interest in giving this a try. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, I just adore Pave style. I'm so in love with it, and I love seeing pieces of art done this way. So yeah, um, hope this inspires some people. And even if it doesn't, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Oh, I'm going to go back to that ginger now. Get her finished off. Oh, or work on that um, spray paint tutorial. Ah, either way, I will see you soon enough. Bye-bye.